Okay, so let's review. We've got definitions and we've got notation. Careful notation, awareness of concepts, and applying them. These always work. One dimensional motion. This is what it means. Uh, these are what these concepts mean. We take them into a special case which is really useful where the acceleration is constant. Maybe zero. That's super easy. Then you just put A equals zero and these equations become trivial. Um, and we derived it. I showed you how to do it with calculus. Uh, we start with the acceleration definition as an integral using careful notation. In calculus classes, we, you know, we're getting introduced to ideas. When we're getting introduced, we often can't pick up the subtleties. So now we go back and we really think about the meaning of it. In calculus, it's like, here, I'll give you a function and use all these tricks to, to evaluate that summation, these shortcuts to evaluate the short summation. Here, in physics, we're going to have to set up the integrals. And so you've got to use good notation. In the case of, this is always true, so we can go back to this whenever we get to cases where the acceleration is not constant. And when it is, though, I can pull out the A, the summation of dt over that time interval is just delta t, and I get the velocity. I then go to the velocity definition as an integral. I take this and put it in for the velocity function, because now its acceleration is constant. I'm restricting it. Put it there. It's a pretty darn easy integral, and you've got this. Again, that t then becomes a delta t, and you've got this. Now, uh, a couple things about this. One is you can write this however you want. Personally, I like this. Often, I don't really care what the position is. All I want to know is the displacement. Not distance, remember, but the displacement. So all I want is that. Now, you know, if you want, you could write this as x later minus x earlier. I mean, you could do whatever you want, whatever you need. First, get it down. The, one of the biggest stumbling blocks for people in problem solving is thinking too far ahead. Where do I want to get? What's the answer? Just write down, you know, if you're not sure, expand it out. So I could write it like this, v earlier, so that's specifically the earlier time, plus one-half a delta t earlier. The el is, is annoying, so people often don't even write it. But when you get confused, this will help you. So if you write it right now, it's good training. So you can write it like that. Now, here's how a lot of people write it. I can move, of course, the earlier position over here. So XL is equal to. And you can figure that out. It's X earlier plus and plus. Well, where did I end up? Well, it depends on where I started, how fast I went, and how long I did that. But that's just how fast I was at the start, not the whole time. And then this is whether I'm picking up speed or losing speed. Okay? All right, cool. So you can rewrite it. Now, I have here two equations. They're independently derived. They are related. They're connected. But they're two equations. So when you get a puzzle, it's going to ask for two unknowns usually. But you can apply them to any earlier and later state. So this could be from state uh, 2 to state 1. And everything's 2 to 1. This could be from 3 to 1. Right? From 1 to, to 3, if you will. Or you could do uh, state uh, 4 and state 3. So in a process, you draw those pictures, those motion diagrams, and say, OK, I want to look at, I want to relate state 4 to state 3, or state 4 to state 1. And so you just do it. And so to do that, let's go over here and, and add some last uh, little practical tips. Uh, <clears throat> to do that, we'd say, OK, from 1 to 2, and write those equations. Uh, from 2 to 5. And literally writing it like that will save you so much time. I trust you. But let's save some more time. Let's do some algebra. No, let's not. Let's pretend we did algebra. You can look at the textbook. So here's how we're going to do it. <clears throat> I'm going to take, I'm going to give you a really cool equation. It's worth memorizing and knowing how it got there. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to combine these two, make a combined equation. So what I'm going to do is, 
Solve for t. I don't want to solve for t here. It's quadratic. So if this is 0, then you're always happy. If you start at 0, that's great. Yay. But it depends on what state that is, right? Um, so I don't want to solve t. I'm solve for t here. And then I'm going to plug it in here. So here's a quick, here's the quick, a, let me say this, useful combined, not new, constant Excel equation. Okay? So I'm going to go like this. V later equals V earlier. At some point, you need to write this pretty fast, delta T. Now, it's kind of obvious that's between those two times, but we'll do that whatever earlier to later. So what's delta T? Well, delta T earlier to later is equal to V later minus V earlier over A. So write as many steps as you need, but you don't have to be, like, too slow. Make sure you get it right, though, so it's worth an extra step. All right, that's true. Now put in put that into delta x earlier to later equals v earlier delta t plus one half a delta t squared. That means this guy goes in here and then it goes in here and you gotta square it. So have fun, I've done it enough. <laughs> and then you're gonna have to rearrange group. It's kind of cool. But really, you don't always want to do that. Here's what you want to remember, though. That combination will give you this equation. V later squared is equal to V earlier squared plus 2A, not delta T, but delta X between which two states? Well, this, these equations only relate those two states. It is a beautiful thing. And if you don't know how to pull this guy out and use it, you're going to be slow. See, because you could find the time and plug it in here. It just depends on what you know. If I know these guys and I want my displacement, I can just get it from this equation without getting time. If you don't have time and you don't want time, well, then skip it. You don't want to have to do this every time. It turns out to be very useful, and we'll see it uh, has some other deeper connections. Let's check the units. Check them in your head. Pause. Okay, yeah. okay, got that. This is meters squared per second squared. This is meters squared per second squared. Two doesn't have any units. This is meter per second squared, and that's meter. So it works. Otherwise, it would be wrong. Um, so that's where it comes from. Very, very useful. Now I have three equations. So can I solve for three unknowns? They're not independent. This came from these two. I still only have two independent equations. Now, from one to two, I'll have two independent equations. Don't use the third. It's just redundant. From 2 to 5, I'll have two new equations because they're relating different earlier and later states. That's the key. That's how you do problem solving. Draw your picture. One, two, three. Pick out your key states. Notice if the acceleration is constant. If it is, you can use these. If the acceleration from 1 to 2 is the same as the acceleration from 2 to 5, I could also solve this problem by writing these equations for 1 to 5. But if the acceleration from 1 to 2 is different than 2 to 5, you speed up in your car and then you hit the brakes, or you speed up and then you coast and then you hit the brakes, then only during those times where you're speeding up can you use the same acceleration. Can you relate them? Then if I hit the brakes, i got to use a different acceleration. I can't do this. So that's only if A stays the same from T1 to T5. Just realize that. Which one do you use? To, you know, what, there's, no, there's no cookbook. The minute you go cookbook, you're going to be in trouble. These are your tools. 
use two of them, whichever are useful. You know, it's quadratic, so you know, stay away if you can. <laughs> but not this, you know, it's fine. Make sure you can do a quadratic equation. Draw your picture, relate it, and it's it's solved. And then remind yourself, oh, I know where these came from. Are good old definitions. Simple definitions written as integrals. Very useful, but not general. Very specific for constant acceleration. Super, super, um, super good. One, two, I like writing it this way. You can write it however. You can do this for x. You can do it for s. We'll even see that we can do it for arc length, and we'll even see we can do it for angle when you do rotations. And the equations are the same. The same form of the equation for any constant even spinning faster and faster, spinning slower and slower, boom. So it's really a, a feather in your cap and a, a strength if you can derive these. And now we're going to get on to problems where we apply it. Draw a picture, choose your states. Notice that for a lot of our problems, the acceleration will be constant. And we'll apply these between two different states. And we're cool. All right. Yay.